Hey guys, happy Tuesday. Welcome to our third Cruise Chit Chat Tuesday. Yeah. I almost forgot the name. Yeah. <laughs> welcome yeah. in, welcome in. We appreciate you guys being here tonight. Um, let's see. And today is, um, what is today? National? Last day of the month. It is the last day of the month. But what, today's National book Vacation Day. So how many of you guys booked a vacation today? How many of you guys took advantage of today? Uh, let's see who we have here in the chat. We have We Trip In. Welcome in, welcome in. Thanks for being here. And congratulations on reaching 1,000 subscribers. Yay. So if you guys are not subscribed to We Trip In, please be sure to um, stop by and um, subscribe. He has a lot of great, they have a lot of great content um, out there and more to come. So definitely um, be sure to check out We Trip In. Um, congratulations on reaching 1,000. Um, let's see, we have Trippin' with Dre and Michelle. What's up, guys? How are you guys doing? You guys had a um, you guys had a milestone. Um, you guys just reached, I forgot the number, but you guys are, is it 2,500, I think I saw um, posted earlier. So congratulations to you guys as well. Um, let's see who else is here. Um, Alyssa, thanks for being here. I appreciate you being here tonight. Let's see. Um, tripping with Dre and Michelle. Dolphin didn't give us our free cruise this year. I know. I know. Were you guys part of the live stream earlier uh, for Carnival? Yeah. Um, yeah, I was kind of waiting on that. So it sounds like maybe there's some free things coming, but it's probably going to be pretty scarce, but we'll see. But guys, welcome in. Today is our third edition of uh, Cruise Chit Chat Tuesdays. And um, we're excited to be here. We have some cruise tips that we're going to be sharing. And um, I put out on social media a couple, well, maybe a week ago, of some tips. So I have some tips from some of our subscribers and supporters that we're going to share out tonight. But if you have any cruise tips or anything that you want to share, please be sure to put those in the chat. Um, I mean, there's lots and lots of tips all over the place. But if you guys have anything, you know, I love to hear it because, you know, we don't know everything about cruising. I feel like every time we cruise, we find something new, a different tip. Um, so yeah, feel free to share out if you have any tips. You mean there's something you don't know about? <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we'll discuss that later. Okay. <laughs> Parker's on the go. Hey, family. Uh, Parker's on the go. They were just on their very first Disney cruise. So if you have not checked out, I don't think that content has started rolling out yet, but they have some shorts and different things available. So. Um, you guys were on, was it Disney? Which Disney ship were you guys on? But they, I think they probably just got home from that. So um, looking forward to that content. So be sure to subscribe to Parker's On The Go as well. And let's see who else we have. We have Rachel here. Thanks for being here as always. We really do appreciate it. Um, I wanna make sure I'm speaking to everyone here in the chat. Um, we tripping, yes, yes. We love you guys too. And we're so excited uh, for your channel. Cool Gamer, hello everybody. How are you doing, Cool Gamer? Thanks for being here tonight. We appreciate it. All right, tripping with Dre Michelle, 2,500. That is a huge milestone, so yeah. congratulations on that. Uh, that is that is so exciting. I'm looking forward to cruising with you guys. I think sometime this year we'll be on the same cruise, but we'll, we'll see. Um, looking forward to hanging out with you guys. Um, Nick, it says, hello, it's Don and Nick from the Elation. Um, nice to see you guys. You guys did not catch our first uh, Carnival Elation um, series. Or that's, that's the couple we ran into? That's one of the couples that we okay. ran into um, the very Ooh. first day. Um, so thanks for stopping in, Don and Nick. We appreciate it. Um, let's see. Everyone's saying congratulations to We Trippin'. Um, let's see, Denise. Hello, welcome in. Thanks for being here tonight. We appreciate it. And I don't think I've seen your name in our chat before, so welcome to um, welcome to our first or our third cruise chit chat Tuesday. Um, Tripping with Dre, Ms. Michelle said shade. Yeah, I think so with that that webinar. Um, Tony Rogers, hello guys, welcome in. Thanks for being here, Tony, we appreciate it. Together We Travel, another content creator. You guys be sure to go um, subscribe to Together We Travel. Thanks for being here. Carnal, uh, Disney Magic, Parker's on the go, they were on Disney Magic. So yeah, you guys be on the lookout for that content from them. And let's get their channel. Where are you guys at again? Uh, um, 
subscriber wise. I mean, you guys are you guys just hit a milestone. You guys are looking to hit another one here soon. So and be sure to check out Alyssa's adventures and cruising as well. She's another content creator. Um, so a lot of content creators here tonight. We really appreciate you guys being here. So That's we'll go cute. ahead and get started. Those of you coming in, if you could be sure to give this video a thumbs up, we would appreciate it. Um, I kind of gotten off with our live date. So I think initially we said we would do every first and third Tuesday. Today's the fourth Tuesday of the month. So we're, we're going to be a little bit off. Um, we'll see. We might do another one next Tuesday. We'll see. But I was like, oh, and I had already scheduled it. I didn't want to cancel it. So it's the fourth Tuesday. So you get a little bonus for this month. Um, Nick says we are going on the Jewel of the Seas the last week of March, our first Royal Caribbean cruise. Oh, enjoy that. I'm curious to hear what you guys think about Royal Caribbean. Um, it's, it's different than Carnival. Not, yes. not necessarily a bad thing, but no, it's, different. it's different. Yeah, curious to hear what you guys think of that. Um, let's see, has some more comments coming in. Uh, let's see. Parker's on the go, almost at 3,000. Parker's on the go. We are at 2,730 right now on the way to 3K. Yes, guys, let's get them to 3K. I think, think you guys can do that here in the next couple of weeks or so. Let's get them there. So if you aren't subscribed to Parker's on the go, please be sure to subscribe to their channel. Um, we absolutely love their content. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. So we um, kind of put out there some different, there's a lot of tips and tricks and things for cruising. And we just thought, you know, we get asked all the time about some of our personal tips and things that we do when we cruise. And we just thought, you know, we would just stop in and um, just share some of those tips with you. If you guys have any specific tips that you um, you know, use or you've heard of, you know, for cruising, feel free to drop those in the chat so we can share out. Um, let me see if I can pull this up. Um, so the first one, I'm going to go to um, one of our subscribers. And if you guys have any thoughts on these tips, feel free to share those out. Uh, let's see here. So the first one that we have is from my sister, my sister Regina. Um, you've probably seen her on a couple of things. Um, let's see, is it showing on the screen? Let's see. I don't think it's showing on the screen. But anyways, it says book in advance. You save money and have time to pay it off. And that's from my sister, Regina. She posted that on our Facebook page. If you aren't following us on um, Instagram or Facebook, please be sure to follow us there. Um, but she's saying book in advance. What do you guys think about that? How many of you guys book in advance? Um, like I said, with today being National book Vacation Day, yeah. book your vacation day. Um, how many of you guys actually took advantage to maybe book out into 2024, 2025 even? Um, I know that it's um, coming from a travel agent, travel advisor perspective, it's always best to book in advance, uh, especially now post-COVID. Um, the deals just have not been there for last minute. I know a while ago you could... Um, you know, right before the cruise, get like a last minute drop or get a last minute uh, deal. Those don't really exist anymore. If anyone's found any of those deals um, recently, let me know. Uh, Denise says, we definitely book in advance. How far in advance do you book out, Denise? Um, I know we are currently booked um, partly through 2024. So we always try to have at least, we try to schedule out at least a year or two in advance. Um, Rachel says, I try one to five to two years ahead of time. And the thing about that is, like I said, you're not going to find a huge price drop, not anymore. But if you're working with a travel agent, you know, they'll run some price checks for you. And if the price does adjust, then um, that can be adjusted. So I find that the more availability on a ship, the better the price. Once things start selling out, um, cabins start filling up, it's just like supply and demand. If there's less cabins available, the higher the price is going to be. So I personally don't recommend booking last minute. I can't say anything because I don't do the booking. As a matter of fact, I mm -hmm. don't even know how many cruises that were going on in 2020. Yeah, he doesn't do any of our booking. He just he just goes. I'm like, we're going on this day. <laughs> Let's go. That's partially because I don't think he doesn't need to know, right? <laughs> Trevor with Dre, Michelle, speaking of booking in advance, I know you got Icon of the Seas, uh, Icon of the Seas cabins hidden. Um, you need one. Yeah, I'll chat with you. I don't I don't really have anything tucked away, but I might know someone um, who does. Um, but yeah, Icon of the Seas, guys, have you guys checked those prices recently? Um, if you followed us, um, maybe 
whenever they announced that the cruise was, I think it was October when it went on sale, um, we were kind of toying with getting on the inaugural sailing and it was like over $8,000. Well, the price has not gone down um, for sure. And in fact, that inaugural sailing is about sold out. There's a couple like really high end cabins available, but uh, we won't be on that inaugural unless, unless something happens and we're sponsored or or we're asked to attend, um, then that might happen. But if we're not asked to attend, <laughs> uh, we won't be on that ship. Not not for the inaugural sailing, I could say that much. Um, Denise says, I usually book at least 12 to 14 months in advance. Yeah, that's ideal to book in advance. The other thing about booking in advance is it gives you an opportunity to pay on it. Um, recently, I've been getting a lot of clients looking to book for like June or July. And then when I get ready to book them, it's like, okay, your final payment is in March. And they're like, why? Like the cruise is not till June or July. And it's like, well, cruises have to be paid, you know, 45 to 90 days in advance, depending on the length of the cruise. So if you want to have some time to pay on it, um, that makes it so, you know, it makes it affordable when you can make small incremental payments over time. So booking out two years in advance, I mean, you could have 24 months worth of payments. Yes. And if you have to book last minute, if you guys aren't aware, there are some cruise lines that offer like uh, different finance programs like i know um carnival and royal and a couple others they use like uplift um that is definitely an option like if you decide to book last minute um and don't want to come out of pocket and sometimes you can get it at zero percent apr so um definitely check that out um if you are booking last minute uh, rachel says looked at a sailing i booked last year at 500 dollars for an inside cabin now it's a thousand dollars i cannot believe it yeah yeah, the price drops. That's one of the things that I kind of um, sold a lot of my clients on was that I would get price drops. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that was prior to, well, the restart with COVID and all of that. And it's like now, like I run price drops regularly um, to see, but I have not had any, like, I think I found one last week where it was like $26. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? $26 is $26. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's rough. It's rough. So yeah, definitely book in advance. Uh, Tripping with Dre and Michelle said, yeah, they only have suites available. Yeah, there's only suites and there's only a few of those left and they're expensive. And none of those suites accommodate five. So um, I, I guess I thought Icon on the Seas, they were going to be more family friendly um, to accommodate larger families. But we would still be in a situation of needing to get two cabins. Sig Cruiser, welcome in. Hey there. Um, welcome in. I see that you're going to be on Celebrity I think next month or yeah, next month for your birthday. Um, so I'm excited to hear that. I have not been on, or we have not been on Celebrity yet, but we're looking at it for this year. So um, Celebrity, but there are a couple other vloggers I know that they were just on that that particular ship, but have a great time with that. Um, Denise, we need an additional two jobs just to cruise with these prices going up on these ships. Yeah, they're not, the prices aren't going down. They're, they're going up. And you know, they're at one time, Carnival, was probably the cheapest that you could get. And I don't think that's the case right now. I think Carnival had the the largest increase here recently. Um, and I know there's a lot of debate. We're not going to debate it tonight. But I know there's a lot of debate about increasing the cost, but decreasing the services and increasing the gratuities and all of that. But yes, yeah, so it's something to think about. Children with Dream Michelle said, yes, yeah, $7,000 suites. Yeah, that's it. I know how we can cruise now. How? leave these damn kids <laughs> we're a family channel we can't leave them at home all the time we'll leave them sometimes but um <laughs> warm strong welcome in um thanks for being here and i did i just caught your i was at carnival sunrise with your family cruise this morning so i enjoyed watching that guys be sure to check out warm strong as well um so a lot of let's see all right so yeah so that tip book early make payments on it it makes things more affordable and you get the best rate by doing that. Um, we also had another um, comment or another tip from, um, I think it's Jasmine, Jasmire, and it says to, hold on, let me. Well, while you're looking for that, I can tell them one of my tips if you don't mind. Uh huh. So when we cruise, more than likely I have to do some type of work. So for me, it was finding the spot with the best internet. and. It's been my fortune that there's always good internet by guest services. That's not scientifically proven, but it works for me. And I can sit mm -hmm. and do my work and yeah. get, get the work done. Between there and the library, you've had good luck in the yes. library. Um, and on Carnival Celebration, Deck 3 was awesome. Like, 
And I don't know, because you know, Carnival's changing up their internet. I don't know if that internet already exists on Celebration, but I was able to upload videos on Carnival Celebration only when I was on deck three though. So we stayed on deck three. So yeah, so maybe consider booking close to guest services, close to the library, you might get better reception if you have to work um, while cruising. Um, we had, is it Jasmine or Jasmire um, on Facebook? One of our Facebook followers said, bring a neck fan for summer cruises and snacks went off the ship. And that's something I had never even thought of. Um, and you can find those. And I actually, after I saw her comment, I went on Amazon. I mean, they're like inexpensive, $10 or whatever. And it'll keep you cool, especially those who get really hot. So um, that was a great tip there to bring a neck fan. Does anyone hack anything? You know, something that I've seen recently on uh, social media, people are bringing like portable fans. Have you guys seen that? Um, like portable fans that I think magnetic or something, and they put them up and they operate like a regular um, fan. That's something you would like. Yeah, I don't sleep with the fan. He sleeps with a fan. I sleep with a heated blanket. But um, does anyone pack anything like that? A neck fan or even one of those portable fans? I guess that's a new trend. Um, let's see. I'm reading some of these comments. Well, I will say this. When I am in the library, I often get interrupted by the friends of Bill W. Mm -hmm. And for those who, of you that know about Bill W., that's fine. But uh, sometimes I have to excuse myself. Oh, yeah. Friends of Bill W. If you guys don't know, uh, Friends of Bill W., that's for um, recovering, recovering um, alcoholics. So mm -hmm. if you see that the first couple times I cruised, I was like, who is this Bill W.? Like he's on every he's on <laughs> every, every ship and pretty much all the cruise lines use that. The Bill W. I guess he was the founder of. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> Yeah, the first two cruises, I'm like, this Bill W, he cruises a lot, like, I don't, and then I found out that that's what it is, so it's kind of a code for those who, um, and, I'm, and I'm glad that the cruise lines offer that, yes. Um, so yes. Uh, let's see, the Jubilee wants $4,000 per person for a balcony. Yeah, is that for the inaugural sailing? Um, we are booked on the inaugural sailing for the Jubilee. We are not in a balcony. I think we're in two interiors for that one, um, but we are booked on that one. Um, let's see, Antoinette, welcome in Antoinette, thanks for being here. She's another um, content creator and awesome supporter. She's on everyone's videos and live streams. She shares out, we just love Antoinette. Um, definitely be sure to check her out. Um, just going through some of these comments. Sid Cruiser says the libraries are usually freezing. That is so accurate. Okay, yes. That is so accurate, but mm -hmm. I think you like the cold. I do like the cold. Yeah, yeah, and I agree, they are freezing. So yeah, so bring a neck fan. That was um, a tip given. And then Sig says, I need to invest in a portable fan now. Yeah, and you had a portable fan there for a minute. I don't know what happened to it, but um, yeah, let's see. Uh, Triple Madre Michelle, now we ask for a fan as soon as we get access to our room. So is that a thing? Are you able to actually get a fan on a cruise? I didn't know that. Yeah, Did you know yeah. that? Mm -hmm. That is interesting. So is there a particular cruise line that off that has the fans? We've never ever asked, but that's something, see, told you we learn something new every day. So we'll definitely on our next cruise, um, see if there's a fan available. That is a really good tip. Thanks for sharing that. Parker's on the go, Brandon packs honey buns, but we have neck fans as well, right? Him and his honey buns. <laughs> Does anyone else pack any snacks or anything? That's something that I feel like we don't really do. Yes. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't feel we really pack snacks because we try to pack as light as possible. We'll pack snacks for the flight, but not necessarily for the cruise. Mm -hmm. But it is an idea when you're in a port and you don't want to really spend money to maybe have something to pack. Now, you know you can't take food off the ship. So I know a lot of people are like, I'll just grab some cereal or grab some fruit or whatever from the buffet. You cannot do that um, when you're cruising if you don't know that. Um, Jane's New Journey. Hello, MH family. Glad to finally join in. Welcome in. We're glad to have you. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Oh, we have Keisha. I missed you somewhere. Keisha is also extremely supportive. I see her everywhere. Um, welcome in, Keisha. Thanks for being here. She's speaking to everyone. Triple with Dre Michelle, the internet and the piano bar is great during the day. Hmm. I tried that, but my problem is the seating there isn't conducive to working on, on a computer with two screens. So I kind of like the library because sometimes they have regular desks. Mm -hmm. He just needs to leave the screens at home, right? <laughs> <laughs> or take an actual vacation. <laughs> right. Uh, see it with C. Welcome in. Thanks for being here, guys. Be sure to check out See It with C as well. She's another awesome content creator. Um, so, yeah, so let's see what else. Um, see it with C says, I hope more of the newer ships bring back the libraries. I've noticed they seem to have gotten rid of them for the newer ships. Yeah, I, I think 
Because there wasn't a library on celebration. Not was there? No, there wasn't. Hmm. That's a good point. Yeah, we, we appreciate the library. Um, it's a nice space. You can go there. Like I've done a couple live streams from the library. Um, so definitely something that we've enjoyed. Antoinette says my husband must have that fan. Yeah, check it out. I've seen a few like videos or shorts about the fan and it's, I think it's magnetic and yeah. And you just put the blades on there and yeah. Yes, I know you can get fans. I keep saying I'm going to do it, but I never do. I am really going to have to try that out because I, this is my first time ever hearing that. Um, see it with C says, I thought Carnival announced they would stop delivering fans to rooms. Anyone else hear that? See, I had no clue as many Carnival cruises yeah. as we've been on. I have never heard that. That is awesome. But we're going to definitely check it out. Um, do they turn off the air at night or am I just cough getting older? I honestly, I freeze. Like if I could pack my heated blanket for a cruise, I would pack my heated blanket because I feel like regardless of where I adjust the uh, thermostat, it's always cold. I think you enjoy that. Um, we're opposites. We're complete opposites. Thanks. We don't even share a blanket because of that, because I have a heated blanket and he usually doesn't sleep with one. So um, guys, I don't know what this stream labs, it says, please refrain sending long messages. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to, that's one of my settings. I don't know what that is. I'll have to stop that, but please excuse them for now. Um, your favorite couple, welcome in, welcome in. Two other um, awesome content creators, also travel advisors. Be sure to check them out as well. Um, but thanks for being here tonight. Sid Cruiser, no Carnival XL does not have libraries. Okay, good to know. Yeah, I was like, yeah, we didn't go in the library at all in celebration, so that's good to know. All right, so let's get back to a couple of these um, tips that were shared out. Um, this is from Rachel, and she said, guys, I don't know why these aren't displaying. Hold on, let me go back. Oops. You guys probably can hear me clicking and doing all that. <laughs> While she's doing that, I'll share with you my second tip that I personally like. I like to pack light, so I always like to have a washeteria or a laundry mat because I'm of the philosophy I don't have to pack a lot of clothes if I can recycle some during the trip. My wife, on the other hand, doesn't really appreciate that logic. I, I can see the value in it for like a seven night cruise um, where you have multiple sea days and you might have like an hour that you can spare to do that. I like to stay on the go when I'm cruising. I will find some downtime, but I personally am not trying to allocate time for washing laundry. I'd rather just pack it dirty and wash it when I get home. But Ron, Ron, Ron loves laundry. So um, yeah, he, he has no problem. In fact, he'll, he prefers to have a cabin that is right across from yes. um, the laundry rooms so that way he can wash laundry. I'm just not like, if it happens and I need to wash, I will. If I'm trying to save money on luggage because you know we crew or we fly on the cheaper airlines, um, I have no problem actually, you know, packing light and then rewashing. Um, so that's not a problem. Um, but speaking of packing, Rachel says she uses her, and guys, I don't know if I ever say this right. Is it Shein or is it Sheen uh, bags as packing pouches in cubes? And I think that is awesome um, because I saw that not too long ago, and I've actually started collecting my bags um, for that purpose. Does anyone use the packing cubes or even the Shein bags um, for, for packing? I, I've tried to, I'm trying to get better organized. I'm not the most organized when it comes to packing. And speaking of that, I keep getting asked, can I do a pack with me video? Guys, I've tried, I just can't. It stresses me out, it stresses me out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it one day. But people are like, can you do a packet with me? And I'm like, oh, that's just like so stressful. Uh, but does anyone use like the packing cubes? Do you, found the, do you find those to be helpful? Let me go to the chat. Um, let's see. <gasps> see, it would see you got put in timeout. Oh my gosh. I don't know how to even fix that. Hold on, let me see if I can go to my settings. Oh, that might have been me. Did you do that? I, no, you I, didn't. I have a rope. So guys, I'm trying to... Um, get get creative get creative and they have these stream labs like ro stream labs robots that can help moderate i don't like the way they're moderating so i'm gonna have to figure out how to turn that off i apologize for that i will not i'll make sure that doesn't happen again um jeffrey's angel welcome in thanks for being here tonight another content creator there um be sure to check out jeffrey's angel um 
<laughs> Keisha says Streamlabs is Streamlabs is on Robocop duty tonight. Apparently, this is my our first time using them, um, but I won't be using them again because I don't like that. They're kicking people off. I apologize. Um, let's see. Let's see who else do we have here? Um, yes, yeah, so you could see that she's in timeout. Um, just everyone speaking. Let's see, Warm Strong. This time last year, we were having a great time on Mardi Gras. Yes, Mardi Gras is an awesome ship. Um, Jeffrey's Angel, I just wash when I get home too. Yeah, I just don't want to spend my time washing clothes, but if he wants to do it, he can do it. Uh, Preteen Girl says, are there laundry centers on Carnival's mega ships? Is there one on the horizon? So the mega ships do not have laundry. I think Carnival Horizon does. I know all of the older ships do. I want to say Carnival Horizon does, um, but the newer ships do not. And I can tell you that Royal Caribbean, none of their ships have them um, if you cruise Royal Caribbean. So um, we pretty much only wash when we're with Carnival. And they do have a laundry service that you could use if they don't have the machines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, that and then if you are, depending on your level with Carnival or with some of the cruise lines, you might have laundry included. Like if you're platinum now, when we're platinum, because we should be platinum, I think maybe the next cruise. You should be platinum. I should be platinum. Probably the next cruise, I think. Sometime this summer, I'll be platinum. Um, and I will take advantage of the free laundry with that because you do get free laundry um, when you're platinum with Carnival. Keisha says, I use packing cubes for my toiletries. That's actually a really good idea to use the packing cubes for toiletries. I could totally see that. Someone else commented to use like a, a, a shoe hanger like on the back of the bathroom door to put toiletries and things in there. Um, so yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, Jeffrey's Angel says, my auntie uses the sheen bags. Yeah, so I, I, I saw that somewhere and I was like, that's that creative. I mean, and they're sturdy bags, so they're, you know, but when you guys pack, like when you pack in the packing cubes, because like I said, I'm not the most organized when it comes to these things. Do you pack like outfits at a time, like one outfit goes in, or do you pack like all of your tops in one? Like, do you separate it out or do you pack it? I'm just trying to, I don't know how that all works. Um, let's see, more comments here. Men don't wear outfits. They don't. <laughs> well, what do you call them? I call them all outfits. Not tops either. Okay. Well, your shirts and pants. Um, Sid Cruiser says, same here, Jeffrey's Angel. I can send out laundry at platinum status on Carnival. Before that, the dirty the dirty clothes came home. Yes, yes. Um, let's see. Oh, hey, Athena, how are you? Hey, um, Octavius, that's my nephew, Octavius. Welcome in. We're going to be cruising. He's going to be on his very first cruise in April. They're both going to be on their first cruise in April, so excited to have them cruising with us in April. Uh, see, it would see. I use packing cubes occasionally. I don't repack them on the way home. Yeah, I could see that. I wouldn't want to repack the dirty, the dirty clothes. Um, see, it would see. I believe the Vista class has a laundromat, but the XL class does not. I think that's correct, too. Um, Jeffrey's Angel says, I'm platinum and still haven't used the laundry. Yeah, I, th I think I might use the laundry, you know, being platinum. Um, but I guess it just depends. If I'm still going to be packing dirty clothes, they all might as well be dirty. But if I'm able to, like, if it's just me cruising and I'm able to get all my clothes washed, I might take advantage of that. But if it's going to be like a split suitcase with dirty and clean, to me, they're all dirty. So I would just wash them when I get home. We do just get a question from Chanel Chapman talking about. She's never cruised before, but she's concerned about uh, seasickness. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I see it here. Con uh, seasick, also I get car sick on long road trip. What's the best way to avoid this problem? So the best thing to do first off um, is to wear, I recommend wearing like a seasickness patch. They also have like bracelets and um, like compression bands that you can wear. Um, we usually wear one behind our ear. I don't get seasick. Um, it's very rare that that happens, uh, but you would want to put that on probably the day before you cruise. That way it starts kicking in. Um, and I also recommend that when you book, um, definitely use a travel agent because they can help find a cabin that's going to help prevent some of that motion. You want to try to sit, um, you want your cabin to be midship and lower on the ship. A lot of people think, you know, if you're lower that you're going to have more rocking, but that's not true. It's when you're up higher and toward the forward or the after the front and the back of the ship that you're going to feel more of that motion. So you want to be middle of the ship, um, kind of on a lower deck. That's going to minimize. It won't completely stop it. Um, some of the older ships, the smaller ships, they don't have as many stabilizers on them. And so you might feel more of that motion 
um, when you are cruising, but not always because we were just on Carnival Elation, which <laughs> is Carnival's smallest ship, and we had no issue with motion at all. So it really just depends on the time of year that you cruise. Um, you know, hurricane season, also like winter time, you get a lot of um, huge swells and different things. Um, it just depends on the time of year you book and you want to make sure your cabin's midship kind of lower, wear a um, seasickness patch. And That's good advice. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to call that FTA, free travel advice. Free travel advice. There you go. Um, so yeah, so I would wear a patch and change your patch out because they last about two days. Mm -hmm. So change it out. Um, and then if you happen to be on board, like I don't like to use the Dramamine or any of the pills because a lot of the times you, they do have non-drowsy um, versions of them, but um, I just don't care to use this. But if you happen to get seasick on a cruise, if you don't know this and you didn't pack any, you can go to guest services. Pretty much any cruise ship will, will give you free Dramamine um, if you're feeling seasick because they'd rather give you Dramamine to prevent you from vomiting or you know anything like that. So um, they will give it to you free of charge. They'll give you a few tablets free of charge. Um, says uh, ginger chews help sweet seeds. Ginger chews, yes. Ginger chews um, help. I have not personally. I've used ginger for um, like being nauseous, like when I was pregnant and things like that. But I've heard of the ginger chews. Also, in, eating like a green apple helps with um, some of the sea sickness or some of the na the nausea and um, things. So yeah, there's a lot of different um, tips out there for that. Thanks for that. Oh, I see Streamlabs is at it again. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to figure out how to turn that off. Um, Keisha says, I pack my outfits and roll my clothes up all nice and tidy, um, both for coming and going. Keisha, you are awesome because I can tell, <laughs> first off, I don't roll anything, packing, going or coming. Um, but on the way home, it's just, we try to balance, okay, is it 40 pounds? <laughs> is this 40 pounds? Mm -hmm. And that's it, we, yeah, we don't do all that, but good for you, I just, I just can't. I just can't. I'm laughing because what usually happens is she'll get all the kids and say, okay, all the dirties go in this suitcase, all dirties. the dirties <laughs> go in this suitcase and fill up your backpacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the kids, we make sure that they fill up their backpacks with things. Hi, my cruising family. Welcome in. Welcome in, guys. Another content creator there. You guys be sure to check out um, their current uh, series going on right now is the MSC Europa. So be sure to check them out. Subscribe. Um, let's see. So, yeah, let's see what other tips we have here. And I know there's a lot of comments coming out. I'll try to get to all those comments as well. Um, one of our, let's see if it shows up. So I guess I have to hide the chat. Ooh. Sorry, guys. This, I need to really get the boys to do this technology stuff for me. All right. So the next, um, the next tip was from is it Jodrick? Um, he's one of our YouTube subscribers. He says bring some of your favorite juice, powder packets, and then bring Ziploc bags to put snacks in. And I can tell you that we used to do that a lot. Um, we would carry, and actually my sister Cheryl um, kind of started that where she, our very first cruise, she packed like the uh, crystal lights, um, mm -hmm. different things, because you have the non-bottled water on the Lido deck. You can also order water bottles for your cabin. Um, but you know, sometimes you don't like the way water tastes. Although I haven't really had an issue with the way the water tastes on the cruise ship. Um, I, yeah, I'm weird about it. I won't brush my teeth with the tap water. Um, but I will drink the water, the filtered water from like the Lido deck. Um, but yeah, so packing those juice powder packets, we don't, we haven't done that recently, but when we first started cruising, we did that a lot. Um, and then as far as packing Ziploc bags to put snacks in, that's something that we haven't done, no. but I might, might, might do that. Does anyone do that? And I'm only saying that because there's sometimes where like you're on the Lido deck and you see you know, there's some cookies that you like and you want to maybe save them and put them in the cabin for later so you don't have to go back to the Lido deck. I'm I'm kind of funny about leaving food out and open. So I could see the Ziploc bags being, you know, a good way to, you know, preserve the food, keep it fresh and safe. Um, does anyone uh, pack snacks or anything using Ziploc bags? But I think that's a great, tip, especially for families, um, to kind of keep snacks and things there in the cabin. Let me go back to the chat real quick. Um, uh, Alyssa says, good job, Keisha H. I just stuff it all back in my suitcase. I'm there for it. Mm -hmm. uh, Together We Travel says, I both roll and fold. Roll and fold, guys. I just, I don't do any of that. I don't do any of that. Keisha says, I use large Ziploc bags or plastic grocery bags for damp, wet 
clothes and shoes. Yeah, that's a that's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. um, we try to avoid packing the wet clothes or we try to make sure things are dried out before. But sometimes, especially like if you're in an interior cabin, it's hard to get things dried before packing. Um, so that's a really good idea, something that to have. Um, Jerry James says, Ziploc bags and my own popcorn is a must. So when you say your own popcorn, do you bring it pre-popped? Like, is it, like, how, how does that work? So Ziploc bags and then your own popcorn. And I agree on the own popcorn because like Carnival's popcorn just isn't good anymore. And I, actually the last couple sailings, they didn't even pop the popcorn yeah. for the movies. Um, you know that they started charging $3 for the popcorn when it used to be free. But I don't find it to be good either way. But yeah, I'm curious to know how you get your popcorn. Um, is it pre-popped? But, um, but that's something. It says no, no Walmart visit. So um, pre-popped popcorn. Yeah, that's a, that's an idea because I love popcorn. Yes. Um, it's just that extra space it takes up in the suitcase that um, that might not work for us. And my wife doesn't like to share her popcorn, but we can share. Why do I have to share everything? <laughs> But we can share a life together. We can share a life together, but I don't want to share my popcorn. popcorn or my chocolate. <laughs> like, you know, it's never sharing with men, or at least not with my, let me not say men. Mm -hmm. At least not with my husband, because it's, you share, like, can I have a sip of this? But a sip turns into you drink all of my drink. Um, so I'm not, I'm not too, too keen on sharing when I don't have to, but I love you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, let's see uh, another tip that we got this is a really good one here um, this is from Monica E she's one of our YouTube subscribers and it says and I'm trying to put it up on the screen let's see here I apologize I gotta remember to turn that off it says don't buy every tour or excursion some of the cruise ports can be explored on your own for free I say amen to this um, I think a lot of times people get overwhelmed with wanting to have something to do, trying to find something to do, and they book um, these short excursions, and it's not always needed. I would say, especially if it's your first time um, at a port, sometimes it's good to just get off and explore on your own, like right there in port, maybe catch a, a, a cab, or maybe get on the local bus for $2, take it around and get back on the ship. You don't always have to book an excursion. Um, that's something that I think initially when I first started cruising, I was trying to make sure I had an excursion for every port. And I just don't do that anymore. Um, another tip would be to also look to book outside the cruise line. Um, but my recommendation, and this is what I tell my clients, I only recommend booking outside the cruise line if, one, you have a passport. Because keep in mind, the cruise lines are not obligated to wait for you if your third party uh, short excursion is late. is late. So they're not obligated to wait and people have gotten left. And then if you don't have a passport, then you're kind of caught in trying to figure out how to get back home. Also, you need to make sure that you have a little bit of cushion in the bank because you don't want to be stuck in the Bahamas and trying to figure out how to get back home and have to get a flight and then don't have money to, to do that. Um, but then also you need to make sure that the short excursion has some sort of guarantee to get you back to the ship. And I always advise to try to get back to the ship at least two hours before back on board time um, to avoid that. Because you can find some really good excursions outside the cruise line for a lot cheaper than the cruise line. You can even find some of the same identical ones that they are offering for cheaper. But I do not recommend it if you don't have a passport and if you don't have some sort of cushion um, because you don't want to get left in port because things have happened where um, it was on the news recently where there was a boat, I think it was a snorkeling excursion, a third party, and the boat ran out of gas or something happened. And it took forever before another boat came out to get um, the guests and they got left because it was a third party excursion and they do not have to wait, they will not wait. Um, so just keep that in mind. But what do you guys think? Do you guys book outside excursions um, or do you stick with the cruise line? Now the cruise line, I do have to say that although they're, they're a little more expensive, they do come with that return to the ship guarantee. Um, if you're cruising solo, I recommend doing um, the cruise line excursion or if you're traveling someplace that you've never been, like I'm going to Europe in July and I think we're going to stick with um, the cruise line excursions only because I don't want anything to happen. I have some sort of comfort being overseas with a group of people from the ship. So um, let's see. 
see what some of these comments. Pittsburgh Steeler fan eight says, uh, take advantage of some of the stuff on the ship. And uh, mm -hmm. I kind of agree. Mm -hmm. That was another tip that we had. Yeah. So if you are, um, but, you know, if you've already been to a port like Nassau, like I think last I was in Nassau 12 to 13 times last year. Like mm -hmm. if you've been to a port and, you know, you, or you just don't feel like getting off, you can definitely take advantage of being on the ship. Um, the ship will still operate. They'll still have the water slides going. They, they just cut back on some of the um, activities like bingo and dance parties and things, but they'll have things like trivia and games and, you know, you have the jacuzzis and a lot of people will get off. So you can use that time to take advantage, especially if it's like a bigger ship or a nicer ship where there's a lot of things where you normally would have to wait in line for. A port day is a great time to... Um, to explore the ship. So that's a great point there. With less of a crowd. With less of a crowd. With less of a crowd. See what she says, solid advice on excursions. Yes. And she says, I recommend if it's a family trip or special occasion, try to book at least one excursion with the cruise line. Um, great way to make memories with your loved ones. Absolutely. Yeah. Try to try to do something, um, but it doesn't always have to be where you're um, spending a whole lot of money um, for excursions and things. So all right, guys, if you're if you're just coming in, if you guys could pl please be sure to give us a thumbs up. Let's see, we have 47 people in tonight. So we really appreciate yeah. you guys being here. And again, we're just here to give some tips and tricks. Um, we're sharing some of what some of our subscribers have shared with us and some of our personal trips for cruising. So we appreciate you guys all being here tonight. Uh, Sid Cruiser, and if you guys don't know Sid Cruiser, um, she is uh, a solo cruiser. Definitely check her out. I don't think I've um, shouted you out tonight, but definitely check Sid Cruiser out. She has lots and lots of tips for solo cruisers. In fact, she says, if I do excursions, I like early morning ones so I can be back in the port area early. I do ship excursions as a solo. And I would definitely say if you're solo, that ship excursion then give you some level of comfort. So that's definitely a great tip there. And yeah, I like the early morning excursions. Um, that way you can get back to the ship before the crowd but then you also might have time to explore the port um, because you're back on time. I don't like that unless it's a um, like we were in Alaska. We mm -hmm. did an excursion and we were like an hour and a half back. We were in Ketchikan. No, one of those things. One, one of them. It was, was Ketchikan. Yeah. And we were late, but it was a ship sponsored excursion that ran late. So everybody was late. Lumberjack. The Lumberjack show. So mm -hmm. um, and they were like, everybody was getting up like in the middle of the show because they were like, we're going to get left. And they're like, no, they made an announcement. They stopped the show and they're like, hey, you guys are booked on a carnival excursion. You are not going to get left. We've already been in communication with the ship. So it was awesome. So definitely. And if you have any fear or if you have any travel anxiety, um, Booking a uh, cruise line sponsored excursion is is um, it'll give you some, some ease. Yes, travel anxiety is real. Yep, Denise says she sticks with the cruise line. So does Yvette. Welcome, any Yvette. Thanks for being here. I think I might have um, skipped over your comment earlier, but welcome, any Yvette. Thanks for always being here and being so supportive. Um, your favorite couple says we book outside the cruise line unless it's an unknown port. Yep, I could see that and. Like I said, just be prepared. If something were to go wrong, you know, I mean, we book a lot of them outside um, the cruise line. What what um, vendor do you guys use if you're booking outside? Like I know we use um, Shore Excursioneer. That's one of our favorites. Um, Shore Excursions Group. And then I don't know if I'm saying it right. Is it Viator or is it Viator? Uh, we use them as well. So you can find some really good deals on both, all three of those. Um, together we travel. Go to the Fun On Board, Fun On Shore show on Carnival. You can win nice stuff. I won free premium Wi-Fi for the week on Mardi Gras. That is awesome. That is an awesome tip. And I share that a lot whenever um, in, the, in my vlogs to go to that show. We try to go to it every time. And we've won things. Like uh, the boys have won like a huge basket full of candy. Joe yes. won. What did Joe win? Uh, the build a bear, build -a -bear. Um, so yeah so definitely go to that um they used to do it to where like whoever made the most noise or you know what act and you know act wild or whatever that they would get but now it's more so they do like a raffle so um, i always recommend going to that because you can even win excursions um let's see keep skipping some of these comments those are some, the same three outside vendors I do look for at excursions because of their return to ship guarantees. Yeah, they all have a return to ship guarantees. Um, and, but their guarantees aren't 
that the ship's not going to leave you. Their guarantees mm -hmm. are their guarantees are that we're going to help get you back to the ship or we're going to help with getting you home or whatever. So that's kind of what their guarantees are. And they really don't want to have to pay for that. So they're going to get you back to the ship. And I have never had an issue with those three vendors. Um, Jessica Brown, welcome in. It says, we like that guarantee. That'll, that will be back in time. Um, it helps us relax and enjoy more without the fear of something possibly going wrong. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Keisha H says, great tips and advice, everyone. I appreciate it all. Yes, thank you guys for sharing. Now let's go back to a couple of um, the other tips that were shared. But yeah, that was a great one um, that Monica shared. Again, she's one of our YouTube uh, subscribers. Let me go here. Um, let's see. All right, this one says to bring a small bag with your clothes in it so when you check your luggage, you can change and get comfortable. Put that swimsuit in it. This is from A Day in the Life of Mocha Sister, and she is another content creator. Follow her on YouTube. Um, so what do you guys think about that? Do you guys pack like a, like when you're checking in at the poor? First off, do you check your bags or do you carry your bags on? We tend to, like, do you check it with the porter? We tend to check them. We tend to check ours with the porter. Um, it's just, you know, we prefer to check in early for our cruise because we like to beat the crowd, um, you know, get on, have lunch, and just beat that crowd. I know some prefer to kind of go midday. Some prefer to go at the very end. Um, but we always uh, check it with the porter. We give a tip to the porter. Um, and we usually go already dressed. Like if we're going to do the pools, like the kids will have on their swim trunks and yes. a bathing suit. So we usually already have that stuff. Um, we just try to limit what we carry on the ship. Um, but we also, that's another tip, um, check in for your cruise right when you can check in. Because if you have a preferred time, you want to be able to take advantage of that preferred time. And so like with Carnival, depending on your status, you could check in 14 to 16 days before your cruise. And I literally set alarms to wake up at midnight um, and I will not do the full check-in, but like Carnival, you some cruise lines, you have to do the full check-in. Some cruise lines, you um, can just go in and select your arrival appointment and then you finish it in the morning. But I, I like re religiously do that because I want to make sure we get like a 10, 30, 11 o'clock time slot. Um, so yeah, so what do you guys think about having a small bag of clothes? And I say that works great for kids. That way they can, you know, change have on their swim trunks and things and enjoy the pools if you if you um, get there early if you want. Yeah, let's see. Uh, let's see. Your favorite couple says, same here, Reese Viator. A fuller life. Thanks for being here. We appreciate you being here tonight. Jessica Brown says, we check hours. I hate carrying bags around until 1.30. Um, we always check in at midnight when it opens to get the first available. Absolutely. That is something that I do. And I try to send my clients like a reminder, hey, you're checking this tonight at midnight. So that way they can try to get that prime time. And not everyone wants that. Not everyone wants that early time. I recognize that. Some people are like, I'd rather wait till the crowd and I get on right before. Um, I just like to get on and I like to explore the ship before the crowd and, you know, just get there. I mean, you pay for your vacation. I like to take, you know, full advantage of that. Um, let's see. All right. So a couple other tips. Let's see, because we're going to try to keep this around an hour, hour and 15 minutes. A um, couple other tips that we had. Do you guys have any other tips that you want to share out? Please feel free to um, drop that in the chat. Let's see here. And I think that was it from our um from our chat but i put down to use a good travel agent if you guys did not see my commercial for that um let's see if i can play it real quick i don't know if it's gonna work let's see but this is why you should use a good travel agent. i sometimes get asked why should i book through a travel agent or travel advisor well let me ask you this would you send your children to a school where the adults there have never taught or would you book a hair appointment with someone who's never cut hair or would you go see a doctor who never went to medical school the next time you book your cruise vacation online or over the phone, ask the call center rep how many cruises have they actually been on. Book your cruise through a good travel agent who, well, actually cruises. Not only do you get free access to a knowledgeable cruiser who can share first-hand tips. Okay, maybe that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that didn't work. Okay. But if you guys have not seen my quick clip on YouTube on why you should use a good travel agent, um, be sure to check that out. But I recommend using a good travel agent because all of these tips and tricks that we're talking about tonight, a good travel agent is going to provide that to you. 
Um, and most of them, it's free of charge. So just keep that in mind when you know when you decide to book with the cruise line. That um, you know you booking with a travel agent, travel advisor. That it not only helps a small business. You know, um, you pay nothing. The cruise lines pay the commission to the uh, travel agent, travel advisor, and you get all of this good information now, um, if you have a good one. Now, what constitutes a good travel? That's what we're talking about. Okay, tell me one. What constitutes now. a good travel agent is someone that can provide you with tips and tricks and uh, personal knowledge because a lot of times those that are on the phone when you call and guys I can tell you this most of you guys don't know this but I was on that end before I started well no I had to cruise yes. like I had I used to answer the phone for like carnival and um, it was like a side hustle that I was doing just to have like vacation money and I didn't know a whole lot about cruising then and it was like you had like a cheat sheet that would tell you everything you needed to know um, but me having, uh, yes, Jim Marie. Yeah, say hi real quick. But me having all of that knowledge because of my personal travels, I'm now able to share a personal experience. I can even point you to a video or a, a clip of something. There's Jim Marie. Jim Marie, what's one of your tips that you want to share? One of my tips that I want to share is to always pack something for the main dining room, like, like the casual room. For casual night or formal night? Formal night. For okay. formal night. So to pack something nice, Jim Marie likes to dress up. Um, we don't get a whole, we don't get too dressy on the cruise. Thanks for sharing that, Jim Marie. We don't get too um, dressy on the cruise ships, but um, yeah, yes. so pack something if you're going to get dressy for formal night. Mm -hmm. um, Jim Marie, Sid Cruiser and Keisha and the others are, Miss Keisha and Miss Sid Cruiser, they're saying hello to you. Yes. She said hi. <laughs> um, so yeah, so good travel agent is going to help. Um, find you that cabin that's going to help prevent some of that seasickness. They're going to, you know, give you some excursion tips and tricks. Um, and they should have traveled. Yeah. I think, I think a, a travel agent should travel, should cruise, um, or if they're, if they're selling resorts should be able to, you know, share some of their insights from doing that. So I'm not going to talk too much about being a travel agent, but that's one of my tips is to um, use a good travel agent and, um, like the travel agent is kind of that buffer between you and the cruise line. So like if you needed something and it's something that most of everything a travel agent can handle, people don't realize that. Um, I rarely have to call Carnival or Royal Caribbean or MSC or I rarely have to call them. Um, but it, it stops you from having to call them and wait on hold and all that. So a lot of things we can handle from our systems and, you know, get you guys taken care of. So use a good travel agent. Um, another tip that I have is if you require any accommodations, um, especially if it's like, um, like if you um, have full use of a wheelchair or um, you need additional space or you're uh, you have hearing or for diabetes. or if you're yeah, if you need needles to make sure your travel agent is notating your booking with that. But if you really if you need an accessible cabin, you need to really book early. Um, I had a situation once where I had someone looking for an accessible cabin for a specific sailing and there wasn't one available. Um, and her family was already on the cruise and she was unable to go because she wasn't able to get an accessible cabin and she required an accessible cabin. So if you have any accessibility um, you know, needs or whatever, please be sure to book early. And I'm talking like a year and a half to two years out because those accessible cabins do fill up early. Um, let's see. Looking through some more of these comments. I see others saying that they check in at midnight as well. And then, okay, just want to make sure that I'm um, getting all these comments. Comments. Um, we have a few more minutes, guys. I'm, I try to keep our live streams at about an hour, hour and 15. I don't want to get too long-winded, but there's a lot of information to share. Another thing is don't feel obligated to get, an, to get a balcony cabin. I think a lot of people, they see people on balconies. You get these nice sunrise, sunset shots and things. You can do that being in an interior cabin. And I can tell you that you can sometimes find an interior cabin for half the price of a balcony. And my whole thought process is if I can find an interior for half the price of the balcony and I'm willing to pay that balcony price, I'd rather just stay in the interior and book me another cruise. I mean, that's just kind of my thought. Like, I don't need to have this this cabin or this balcony because a lot of times people realize that they don't really use the balcony a whole lot because there's so much going on around the ship that you're not spending a whole lot of time in the cabin. So don't ever feel pressure to book a balcony cabin because sometimes they are double the cost of like an interior or sometimes even an ocean view. So just kind of look at the pricing on that and in your mind, like if I 
you know, if I, if I, if I have the money to book a balcony, why do that if I can now book two cruises? Oh, so it wasn't about saving the money. It was mm-hmm. just having another cruise experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, C with C Streamlabs that's a cruise says Streamlabs going in on you. What did you do to him? I am so sorry, guys. I'm gonna turn that thing off. This is the first time I was like, I'm gonna put this moderator. I saw the it was on one of my studies. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. But sorry, I didn't know it was gonna act like that. Um, another tip that I have is to find a hotel nearby that offers free cruise port shuttle or parking. I try to avoid using the cruise ship transportation, Uber instead. And I say that because first off, there's a lot of hotels that will offer it for free. You just have to do research. There's not as many anymore, but again, a good travel agent will know those hotels. Um, if you were to ask me which hotel in Miami, I can go straight and tell you that I know these hotels offer because more than likely I've stayed there and that's you know my preferred spot. Um, so try to find the ones that offer free cruise port shuttle and or parking. Um, and then if you aren't staying at a hotel and you're like you're leaving the um, airport, you're flying right in going to your cruise, Definitely consider Ubering or look at the cost of an Uber over the cost of the cruise ship transportation. Because one, the cruise trip transportation, a lot of people don't realize it. There are these huge charter buses. And so like when you get off the ship, sometimes you might have to wait till that fills up to leave. Or even when you're at the airport, you have to wait for that to fill up before you leave. So it's not like you can leave when you want to leave. Um, But you might spend like, for instance, I want to say... Fort Lauderdale, like we fly into Fort Lauderdale a lot because the flights are cheaper. And then we... um, Uber to Miami for our cruises out of Miami, Fort Lauderdale, like Carnival, it's like $35.99 per person for their bus transportation. But we can Uber from Fort Lauderdale to um, Miami, to Miami Port in an Uber XL that'll accommodate all five of us and our luggage for like $50. So why would I pay $35.99 for this per person? That's $170 or so. Why would I do that? So make sure you look at the cost of um, the transportation, you know, before you do that. And you can price out an Uber to kind of get a, an estimate of what it'll be um, by doing their schedule feature. I don't recommend using that though, because I've learned that if you do the pre-schedule your Uber, some people like that because it has a peace of mind or whatever. Um, but I've learned that if you do that, it's more expensive than if you just book it whenever you're ready to have your Uber. So never really had issue with Uber um, getting to or from the port. And sometimes we fly into Stanford in Sanford, Sanford yeah. in Uber in or mm-hmm. rent a car. Yeah. Yep. Um, so we are known for taking cheap airlines mm-hmm. and not and driving part, part yeah. way. So yeah, do whatever you have to do to cruise. I mean, we live in Ohio and flights are high and the drive is long. So don't want to take that drive. Um, but Denise says, I have never had an interior cabin. Do you feel closed up? Let me tell you, usually an interior cabin is only slightly smaller than an ocean view or balcony. Uh, I think some people, there's this misconception that an interior cabin is really, really small. It may seem smaller because um, there's no window or no balcony, but it's really only slightly smaller than an ocean view or balcony, depending on the ship. Um, when you look at the square feet, and you can actually ask, again, a good travel agent will be able to pull up those deck plans and give you the square footage and things like that um, mm-hmm. so that you can see that, yeah, if you're looking to get more space, you're not getting a whole lot. You might get 30 more square feet, you know, going from an interior to a balcony, and pr- probably most of that is going to be your balcony. Um, yeah, so um, no, don't really feel closed in. Um, but if you're claustrophobic, that could be something that, you know, maybe you need to have a window. Um, I had a client sale recently that I felt like she probably needed a window. Um, so it really just depends on you. I've never felt closed in. And in fact, you get some of your best sleep in an interior cabin because it lets no light in. I mean, it's like pitch black. So if you like dark, darkness to sleep, then yeah, an interior is the way to go. I wanted to say one more tip that I don't know if a lot of people that you started. Sometimes we will fly out of different cities and into different cities. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize until my wife started doing this that she usually only books the first leg of the trip. And she might say, okay, we're flying flying from Columbus to X, but we're flying home to Cincinnati Mm -hmm. or home to someplace else because the it might be $25 or $30 yeah. a person. Yeah, I very rarely book a round trip flight. 
um, it's usually two segments. So for instance, we just did this when we did Colonel Relation. Mm -hmm. um, we flew from Columbus, Ohio to, um, where do we go? Charleston, West Virginia, not West Virginia, Charleston, South, South Carolina. Carolina. Um, we did that on what airline was that? Was it Breeze, Breeze Airways? I was in Boston, so I didn't. Yeah, I think it was Breeze Airways or no, it was a Velo. It was a Velo Airways um, <laughs> um, to Charleston. It was twenty dollars a person for the mm -hmm. flight, and then I paid for one check bag. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas it would have been, it was like two or three hundred dollars one way to fly to Jacksonville directly. So we we flew to Charleston. Per person. Yeah, the twenty dollars was per person, and then I paid. I think for one check bag, the kids had their backpacks. So it was like a hundred twenty dollars total, maybe for the four of us to fly one way to Charleston. And you got a one way. Rental. Then I got a one way rental. It was like sixty dollars, a one way rental from Charleston to Jacksonville. Um, dropped it off at the airport. And so that was one leg of our trip for people, $200. And then flying home, we flew out of Jacksonville on Allegiant. And I don't remember the cost, but yeah. So try to be creative that way. So yeah, that's a definitely a tip there. Um, let's see, there was another comment here. Uh, Pre-teen girl says, thank you, SIG, planning for solo, wanted balcony, but could really save money by not. Yeah, save that money because you're not going to spend a lot of time in the cabin. I say it all the time. It's the three S's. You sleep, shower, and um, that's what I tell my clients all the time. So do not feel like, especially your first cruise, you'll see it. There's so much to do, and you're going to want to explore and see. Now, those who have cruised a lot that just really like the relaxation of it. Some people like to spend time in their cabin, and I recognize that. So if you're one of those people that like to spend time in your cabin, then go for it, go for it. Jessica Brown, when you drive into port, do you have to keep the rental for the whole cruise or can you drop it off and pick it back up? Yeah, no, we usually um, do a one-way rental, we drop it off at the airport and then we Uber from the airport to the cruise terminal. Or if we're staying at a hotel, we'll get on that free shuttle. Um, you can even find some, um, some rental car places that are near the port. For instance, we use, um, often we use, there's a budget rental center right in downtown Miami mm -hmm. where, um, we might pick it up like sometimes like once we kind of, we flew in Orlando because the flights were cheap, like $25 a person. We flew into Orlando, drove to Miami, which is like three hours, I think. Yeah. It's like three hours, we did one way. We dropped the rental car off at the budget at the downtown, downtown Miami, which is just like two or three miles to the port. And then they have a shuttle, a free shuttle that takes you to the terminal. And then when you're going back, if we need a rental, normally we fly straight home, so we don't need another rental, but if we do, um, you, they can pick you up at the port free of charge to the rental car and then there you have it. So yeah, you have to really search and find and um, again, a good travel agent knows those things. Um, let's see here, Streamline, Streamlab, Zap, Sig. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I have never seen this happen on other people's lives. Maybe they're not using Streamlabs. Um, Sig says Streamlabs getting me confused with, <laughs> let's see it, let's see, that is hilarious. I am so sorry, guys, that will not be on for the next, please make sure you return to our next live stream. Uh, we have a couple more tips I do want to go over though real quick. Um, Preteen Girl says in the military, we say, yep, yeah. shower and shave, there you mm -hmm. go. Um, and yeah, that's it, that's all you're going to do. Uh, next tip, and I have a few more I want to share, um, never feel the need to keep up with the Joneses. Do what works for you, your family, your budget. Too often I hear people feeling like I can't cruise because I see, you know, these people do and they spend a lot of money and it, you know, costs this, or maybe it's only for people that have a lot of money because they do it so often, um, but they don't recognize that they either found a great deal, they had a casino deal, they're a travel agent. You know, there's a lot of reasons behind why people do it so often, or they feel like, um, you know, I don't really have the money, but I want to go all out. Don't feel like that. Get out there, cruise, do what works for you and your family. Do not feel like you have to keep up with anyone else um, because cruising is what you make it um, and do it based on, you know, what, you know, is best for your family and your budget. Um, my next tip, cruise regardless of your age, disability, ability, special needs, all of that. Don't let anything stop you. Too often I hear, um, well, I'm in a wheelchair, I can't, or, um, you know, I'm autistic, or I have a child who's autistic. You know, there are so many different programs out there. First off, you don't know if, especially I'm speaking of, you know, a child with autism or special needs, you don't know how they might adapt to being on a cruise ship. 
which one could be scary. I get it. Um, but you just don't know. So I say until you try it, you don't know because we, like I said, you guys know Andrew's autistic. We didn't know what he would do the first cruise. And you guys see him now. He's up there with the cruise directors jamming during a deck party. Now, you know, the first cruise, we did not know what he was going to do, but we did not know that he was going to be in the Congo line uh-huh. either. So, yeah, I mean, he, it's a it's a controlled mm-hmm. environment and it yeah. gives him some real world experiences yeah. dealing with all types of people. So don't feel like, it, you know, I have a family member that can't. Um, Everyone can cruise. It is really meant for everyone. And you will see everyone out there cruising. Yes. Um, There's so many programs, like I mentioned, the Autism on the Seas. I'll be volunteering with them sometime this year. Um, you have special needs at sea. You have, if you have somebody that has like medical needs, like they have um, dialysis at sea, they have different programs that can get people out there cruising. So don't ever feel like you can't cruise because of whatever you feel is, is holding you back because it's just there's ways and the staff and the crew on these ships are amazing they are trained they are just amazing and um don't ever let anything stop you from cruising um next to let's see a couple more oh try to avoid feeling the need to do everything on the ship there's a lot of things happening and some people get overwhelmed because you get this schedule of events and you feel like i gotta do this i gotta do that it's a lot and a lot of times they stagger things to kind of prevent um or to have crowd control so don't feel like you have to do everything try to do a couple of things and i know that's hard to say because as a vlogger i try to get to most of everything but that's because i want to show you guys what there is um but don't do that like don't like don't don't feel like you have to do that because you're going to stress yourself out and not enjoy your vacation i can attest to that because i don't do most of the stuff with my wife mm-hmm. yeah yeah, he does. And you guys, you guys see him in the vlogs. I mean, he pops up from time to time yeah. <laughs> and other times he's off chilling somewhere and it's fine. It works for us. Jessica Brown says, thank you. Going on the celebration in March and flights are outrageous and not looking forward to a 13 hour drive. Oh gosh. Yes. Um, so yeah, look at, look at flights. And like I said, we will fly out of, we live near Columbus, Ohio. Um, we might drive to Cleveland because the flight is cheaper from Cleveland to Miami, or it might be cheaper from Detroit, even Detroit or Chicago. Mm-hmm. We might drive and then and and then catch it, you know, that way. Uh, so you got to get real creative now. Because for us, it's five people flying. Mm-hmm. It's not just one or two. Yeah, and I can tell you that um, those of you that. Um, you know, if you are looking for a travel advisor, I would love to help you. I don't personally book flights and I don't book flights for this reason. I will share um, tips or, and I will actually help you find a flight. I just don't personally book flights. And the reason behind that is because I cruise regularly and my goal for this year is to cruise once a month. Um, excuse me. <laughs> my goal this year is to cruise once a month. Um, and so it's, it's hard when you have cancellations and delays and things like that. And you're actually out on a ship and you have to help support your client getting rebooked or having to call the airlines. So it's a huge mess. So I, I choose not to, I'm very upfront with my clients. I do not book flights, but I have no problem if I'm your travel agent to help you find like those deals. Like I'm telling you now, like I will send those to you and have you book it because what you don't, what people don't understand is once you start working with a travel advisor, pretty much everything that you book has to go through your travel advisor. So I don't want to ever be on a ship and God forbid my client's flight gets canceled and I can't contact the airline for them. So I avoid that at all costs. And I'm very upfront with that with my um, clients. Um, Keisha H says, oh, Together We Travel says, we're on the celebration late March. Maybe you guys are cruising together. Um, say cruiser. Oh no, I get porthole rooms sometimes, not worried about appearance. You get portholes a lot. Yeah, I was watching your um groupcation vlog, I think, this morning. And yeah, portholes are good. Now, porthole, um, if you have any seasickness, I wouldn't recommend that because that is all the way to the front or forward of the ship, and you don't want that rockiness. Um, let's see here. Keisha H, my first cruise, hubby had me go all out on my solo cruise. I could have booked three cruises if I'd known better, but you know better now, right, Keisha? So you won't let that happen again. James no, New Journeys, amen. Booked Mardi Gras again, solo. I'll be 81. Yay. Wow. 81 and cruising. That is awesome. That's beautiful. By December, have the same handicapped cabin I had in December 2021. And that's because you booked early, I am sure. But that is awesome, Jane. You're out there, 81. I love it. I want to I be just like you when I grow up. I want to be just like you. Uh, Fuller Life Now says, just told someone that yesterday. Um, let's see. Do you have any tips for travel docs? What do you mean in terms of travel docs, preteen? 
Go ahead and drop that in the comment. Let me go through these last couple. I know we're running late if you have to step away. Um, my, my next tip is a personal tip. It says find a corner or balcony and an ice cream cone or drink and have some you time. Um, a lot of times, you know, when you're cruising, especially with family, you know, it can get overwhelming sometimes, especially, you know, trying to get the kids here and there and do this and that and excursions and this and that. And I can, it's hilarious because I, I do it at least once every cruise. And if you ever are on a ship and I'm on the ship, you might see me, just leave me alone for a minute. I'll be in the corner of the Lido deck and like that, it's happened two or three times recently where I'm like literally there just looking at my ice cream cone or sipping my drink. And like Dyson walks by with his group of friends and I'm just there minding my business and he doesn't even see me. And eventually he'll catch on that I'm there. But you know, you need that peace of mind. You need that. So make sure you take time for yourself, even if you're cruising with others, like just step away for a moment. And I do that. I will step away and you know, there's no device, there's no camera, there's no nothing. I just sit there. I enjoy my ice cream and peace. Just kind of people watch, make that happen because you deserve some new time as well. Um, so I, I definitely make that a, a routine. So we did get one thing from Cherry Ice Cream. Any advice for a newly amputee? And I can speak a little bit about that because my mother was an amputee. Mm -hmm. And just if you're newly amputated, please keep in mind that those phantom pains are real and try not to do too much because you're still healing. Uh, and just take it easy. There's nothing, uh, nothing different. Just mm -hmm. be mindful of your body. Yeah. And you would, I'm guessing you would probably need a, an accessible cabin. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely make sure, you know, if you're looking to cruise, try to book early so you can get, because each, I mean, all cruise ships have accessible cabins. They don't have many of them though. Mm -hmm. And they have some that are fully accessible. They have some that are partially accessible. Um, so it really just depends. Um, so you definitely, I think people think all cabins are created equally and they are not. So if you, um, you know, have any accessibility or, um, you know, amputee, disability, anything like that, book early. That way you can get the cabin of your choice. Um, can I, I just want to say, uh -huh. when I lived in Colorado, I took my mother skiing with me and she wasn't skiing, of course, but she was just sitting in the waiting room, uh, in the, the lounge area. And we had a fun time and all she did was people watch. And uh -huh. uh, there's so much to do. There's yeah. uh, and we ran into some amputees that were skiers as well. So it's kind of a cool community once you get insert yourself into mm -hmm. that community. And there may even be like, there's Facebook groups for everything. There might even be a Facebook group for um, amputees who cruise. Um, mm -hmm. Just look, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of different resources out there. But yes, book early. That way you get the cabin of your choice. Um, another tip that I have, don't wait for a group. This is a big one. Don't wait for a group consensus or wait on deposits. I've been there, I've done that, and I work with a lot of groups, and this is the biggest thing. Like, I've learned, just book it and then tell them what you're doing, because, I mean, and let me, let me take a step back. I get passionate about this because it's like sometimes a travel advisor's big waste of time, especially when you, you write your services free of charge, just going around and around and around with groups, and the groups don't really come to nothing because people aren't ready or they can't make up their mind, things like that. Um, from my personal experience, when I've done like smaller groups and things, I don't, it depends on your family. It depends on your friends. Some people can come to a consensus and that's fine, but some cannot. Mm -hmm. So it's okay, especially if you're kind of the person that likes to do the planning and leading of the group. It's okay to say, you know, maybe get an idea of when people want to go um, and then just say, okay, I'm booking this and I booked it. Here's the, this is what you got to pay, pay it, whatever. And if you don't get the group, don't let that stop you from traveling. You see Sid Cruiser, she's out there doing solo cruises all the time. I mean, get out there and cruise. Um, do not wait on others. Do not wait on a group. Don't feel like you have to go with somebody. There's um, a large community of solo cruisers and they have different like solo cruising meetups and different things on the ships that will make it. You're not gonna be bored, trust me. Um, so don't wait on a group. And again, if you wanna have a group, I've learned, and I've actually had a few clients to do this. They have literally booked, and then once their family or friends, like they, they couldn't decide on anything, but once their family and friends saw that they were actually booked, then literally people are starting to, you know, drop their deposits. So keep that in mind. Um, Preteen girl says, dad's name is misspelled on birth certificate. Scared he won't be able to board. 
what I would recommend is to uh, contact your uh, vital statistics department to see if you can get that corrected. Um, if not, so if he's cruising with the birth certificate, he would need to have a birth certificate and a valid ID to cruise. So make sure he has a valid ID and the birth certificate. Um, a lot of times if it's like a slight misspelling, they won't make a big deal at it because he would already have um, like on the booking, his name would be spelled correctly. His ID would be spelled correctly. A lot of times they don't make a big deal, but if it like changes the name at all, then sometimes they won't let that pass. Um, or if it's like a big, um, you know, um, if it's misspelled in a big way, then they won't let that pass. So I would recommend trying to contact your vital statistics. A lot of times you can get birth certificates, you know, sent to you within a week. I don't know when you're cruising, but um, try to see if you can get that corrected on the birth certificate. I've even had clients to where like maybe their ID and birth certificate was spelled or it was spelled differently on like their ID and they would just match it. Like the booking would match their ID. Um, usually they're more sold on what the ID says than the birth certificate because you have people that have maiden names and things. So they don't make a big deal about the birth certificate as much as they do the ID in the passport compared to what's on the booking. So good luck with that, but definitely try to go to your vital statistics. You can even go online. A lot of states, you can order it and get it within a week. So, and see if they can get that updated. Someone is commenting, uh, give us your thoughts about travel insurance. Travel insurance. Um, where's that comment? I'm trying to find it. We're kind of bouncing around a little bit. Um, so travel insurance, I recommend it. I recommend having some sort, sort of travel insurance. Um, because nowadays, you know, things happen. You don't want to miss out on your money because you're sick or something happens, flight delays, flight cancellations. Um, and I'll be very honest, we didn't always do the travel insurance initially when we first started cruising. Yes. Um, I think it took probably around COVID time we really started to say we need to have some sort of insurance. Um, but it's it's valuable to have. It doesn't cost a whole lot, a lot of compared to the cost of your cruise. Um, but I do recommend doing research because what people don't understand is some cruise lines, not all of them, some cruise lines, it's called vacation protection plan. And it's called a uh, vacation protection plan. Text starts to bring my charger. Sorry, my computer is going to die. Um, they call it vacation protection plan because it protects your vacation, meaning your cruise. It may not cover flights. It may not cover anything that happens prior to the cruise. So you always want to investigate and find out what it covers. Um, a lot of times you can find that right online. You just have to make sure you filter down to your state because each state is a slightly different. Um, so I recommend doing that. Um, some cruise lines, you're able to get the, theirs and it covers everything, but others, like I'm thinking Royal Caribbean, people don't know this. Royal Caribbeans will not cover your flight. If you're canceled and you didn't book your flight through Royal Caribbean, they're not going to cover that. Now, they will give you they will give you a refund on your cruise portion if your flight is canceled because, um, because you have the insurance and they have like a cancel for any reason or cancel for you know, certain reasons you get 75% future cruise credit, things like that, but it won't cover, like it, if you miss your flight and you don't have regular insurance, then Royal Caribbean's insurance is not going to cover your flight portion um, you, to give you a refund. Can you explain practically how it works? Because I think some people will be surprised. We had an experience where we had a cruise in Miami that we had to use the insurance and it took us almost six months yeah. Six months to get reimbursed mm -hmm. for something that we had insurance for. So don't go there with the with the thought that, oh, I'm going to shell out X and get paid the X in a week. It yeah. didn't happen that way for us. Yeah, I, yeah, I think um, people believe that with some insurance, like health insurance, a lot of times that stuff is, you know, you don't pay for it up front and get reimbursed. Um, it's just covered. A lot of times the travel insurance, you have to pay out of pocket first and then get reimbursed. If you have flight cancellation and you have to rebook, um, it's expected that you pay for that new flight and then get reimbursed. And I've had some that have, you know, had the insurance. And first off, let me just say, not every travel advisor advises on travel insurance. Like I legally cannot give you advice on, um, travel insurance. I can give you like the generic, like this is, you know, mostly what it covers, but I can't give you any details as far as what it could cover if this scenario works for this, because I'm not a licensed um, insurance broker or anything like that. Um, but I can share with you the documents and what it will cover. 
Um, highly recommend it, but just keep in mind that even with the insurance, you may have to come out of pocket first and then get reimbursed. Um, and, and it could it. take some time because like, yeah, we, with our Disney cruise, was it Disney cruise? No, it was when I had COVID on Carnival Conquest. We had to cancel two cruises after. One cruise line gave us all of our money back and future cruise credit and all that. Uh, another cruise line decided they weren't going to give it to us until we tried to put it through our insurance. Um, so I had to put it through the insurance and then um, it did. It took about six months and some harassing to, to get that. So just be careful what you um, book for your insurance and read into it. Um, there are some travel agents that are like licensed to give that specific advice, but um, I try to avoid that only because I don't want there to be any liability if I tell you, like, yes, it's going to cover this exact scenario and it does not. Um, that's why you put it through the insurance. And even like if you book it through Carnival, if you call Car if you book Carnival's insurance or vacation protection plan and you have to file a claim, Carnival is not going to advise you of anything. They're going to send you to Aeon Infinity. I think it's what it's called. They're going to send you to the Aeon Infinity line and then they're going to be the ones to advise you. They we legally can't. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh yes, Keisha, Sea Leg Journeys, that is right. That is right. So definitely check out, um, yeah, another amputee. That is, I didn't even think about that. That is awesome, yes. Um, so I wanna make sure I have everything here. A couple more, guys, I know I'm running a little late, but this is some, some, some good tips I wanna share. Um, now this is a personal tip of mine, and I know this doesn't work for everyone. Um, I just said, do you want to cruise more often and save money? Avoid the pressure to overpack and be glamorous while cruising, unless this is your typical personal lifestyle. And I say that because I've had lots of friends and family that, you know, you go on your first cruise, and I was guilty of this my first cruise. You spend so much money on your wardrobe to go cruising that that could be another cruise in itself. And... I don't have that issue. No, you don't have that issue. Um, but people will go out and spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on new clothes, resort wear, beach wear, things like that. And if you don't have it, I understand needing to get it, especially if it's your first cruise, first time at the beach, whatever. But some people go overboard. Um, and again, this is a personal preference. I feel like you can save a lot of money by not doing that. You're going to see all kinds of walks of life on the cruise. People wearing all kinds of different things. You're going to see some that are, you know, you know, done up to the nines, you're going to see some that are just kind of, you know, whatever. Um, I don't advise to go out and feel like you have to go buy these things. I'm um, like, you hear about formal night, you hear about formal night and things like that. You don't have to spend a whole lot of money on formal wear. Um, you know, your formal wear, what is that? <laughs> That's what all that noise was. So oh, he's going to show one of our first cruises. It was a girl's cruise. I ordered these. Guys, they still look brand new, right? Must have. It was a must have. Cruise Diva. Guys, these shoes look brand new, don't they? Because I've worn them like once. <laughs> so you you book, you, you know, you pay for all these things and do all these things. And you don't really, you really don't have to. Now, there are some people, and I have absolutely more power to you. I'm just not like that. That are always glamorous, you know. You know, makeup, hair, nails, nice clothes, you know, you're always like that. Then, yeah, you should. You should represent on the cruise. But if you're not, sometimes I feel like people go on a cruise and it's almost like you see it on TV, you see it on Instagram where people are wearing and doing and this and they feel the need to do that. Don't do that, especially if you're not. Guys, I can tell you, I'm extremely basic. <laughs> that was a long time ago. I'm extremely basic. And so... Um, yeah, you'll see me on my vlogs. Literally, you'll see me in the same swimsuit on different vlogs, uh, same outfit. Like, I don't feel the need to do that. So don't, you could save money unless, like I said, you already do that, then do it. But um, if you don't, don't feel like you have to, to do it. And then if you do, go to Shein because they have a lot of really cute outfits for really cheap. So uh, let's see. And I think that is about it for my tips. Um, if there's any last minute tips, feel free to drop those in the chat. Let me see if I can go back in the chat real quick. Um, Denise says, pay your gratuities in advance if you can. Absolutely. That's one less thing you have to worry about. Pay your gratuities. Everything is covered. You don't have to spend another dime on the cruise ship if you choose not to. Um, but some people get stressed or worried whenever that gratuity hits their account the night before the last day or whatever. Um, pay for it all in advance. You don't have to worry about it. And again, 
Some people have their own thoughts on gratuities, whether you dispute them, whether you don't, whether you pay in cash, whatever, do what works for you. Um, uh, Patricia, welcome in Patricia Jones. It says, yes, book and let them know you have booked. Absolutely for group cruises. Sig says, I book and I will tell family and friends later. If they want to go, they can book. If they don't, I go solo. Absolutely. That's what I learned. That's what I learned. Um, a preteen girl said, thank you. Seven-year-old dad never got it corrected. Yeah, see if you can get it corrected. Um, I don't think it will be a big issue, but I don't want there to be any chance of that, you know, deterring you guys from getting on your cruise. Um, it says, I pay down payments for people and they still don't go. So now I just go by myself. Yeah. Oh, and absolutely don't front any money. <laughs> Sorry. Don't front any money because, oh. Ooh, as a travel advisor, like I don't like getting caught up in that mess. You front deposits and people don't pay. That's not my business. That's not my trying to get this back from selling. That's just not my doing. So yeah, don't front people because people are ready to cruise until it's time to put that deposit down uh, or until it's time to make that final. Because you get some that'll put the, put the deposit down but not do the final payment. So people are wanting to do it, but then when it's time to pay up, they don't want to. So be cautious of that. Um, James, if you have pre-existing conditions, some insurance plans require you purchase within 14 days of your booking. Thank you for sharing that, Jane. That is extremely important. Thank you for sharing that. So yes, when you book your insurance uh, or, try, or vacation protection plan, regardless if it's with um, uh, the cruise line or if you use like I share with my clients, insuremytrip.com or you have Alliance, you have a few other um places that I will send out. I won't actually book your insurance for you, but I will share that out. I might later on um, get trained and do all of that. But right now, that's just not one thing that I'm, I'm worried about. But yes, you have to, if you have any pre-existing -condi pre conditions, you have to have it on your booking 14 days, within 14 days of booking your cruise. Now, some people are hesitant to do that, but most cruise lines offer a 10-day uh, policy review where you add it on when you book and then you have 10 days to like look over the policy. And if you don't like it, you can get your refund. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. Um, and then also a lot of cruise lines, you have to have the insurance added on at least um, a week or two before you cruise. You can't wait till the day before, which you really, you know, waiting until the day before, if you're booking third party, it's going to go up because the sooner you book from the date you book, it's, it's less. If you wait till closer to your ceiling, it's going to slightly go up. So keep that in mind. Um, say Cruz, I've had different experiences with claims, one good, one bad. Yeah, I hear mixed things about the, the insurance, but as long as my thought, as long as you get your money back, I, sometimes it is a hassle because they want you to provide all these different things. Um, you know, and I feel like sometimes they do that to deter you because some people would just give up. Like, I've already sent this document in, now you're asking for this, and I need to get a copy of this, I need to get a statement from this person. And you know, they put you around the ringer for these things. And some people just like, I'm just not even worried about it, but don't, don't let anybody keep your money. Um, let's see. Um, C. King said, can I get a brief synopsis of the topic? Yeah, we're just talking uh, cruise tips in general. I'm gonna, we're gonna get off here in like two minutes and you guys can definitely catch the replay. Just some cruise tips um, that we're sharing. I had some from subscribers that um, we wanted to share out with everyone. Um, Cherry Ice Cream says, I'm new at this. Yeah, definitely reach out, Cherry um, Cherry Ice Cream. That sounds mm -hmm. good. <laughs> we love ice cream. Um, cherry Ice Cream. Yeah, if you are new to this um, and looking to get, you know, to work with a travel advisor, definitely reach out to me. My email address is in the description box for this video and all of our videos. Um, Yvette says, Ron wanted to share examples. Yeah. Um, Eve says, the travel agent I used was able to get the cruise line to credit my onboard account. I won't do that again. Yeah, be cautious on the onboard account sometimes because sometimes they'll put that onboard credit and stuff as um, non-refundable and you can't cash it out. Um, so be cautious of that. Anytime, anytime you're getting a refund of any sort, you need to ask, is it refundable or is it non-refundable? A lot of times they put it as non-refundable because they want you to spend it on the ship. So keep that in mind. Um, you want the refundable kind that you can go to guest services and cash out or go to the casino and cash out. Um, C. King says, I'm on February 10th through 13th on Liberty. Are you knowledgeable on there's a captain's dinner night on this three day? Yeah, and actually I have a whole series on Carnival Liberty if you haven't checked it out. Um, I was on Carnival Liberty back in June. So check that one out. And yes, there will be a um, captain's dinner or a formal night. Um, there's one on a three night sailing. I don't know the exact day, um, usually it's a sea day, but not always. So um, you will have to wear your formal wear packet. 
Um, let's see, any other comments there? Thanks for all the wonderful tips tonight. Thank you for being here, Everyday Getaways. I missed you in the comments earlier. I apologize. Everyday Getaways, another content creator. And husband and wife, be sure to check them out as well. So you got to retravel. Tell them to send you as well. Oh, Cherry Ice Cream. Thanks Thank for you. subscribing. I didn't hear the thing go off. But thanks for subscribing. We appreciate that. We are on a mission to hit 7K by February 14th. So we have about 220 subscribers to go. Guys, it's been amazing because like just this week, this week, we I mean, we've had like, I feel like every day I'm getting at least 20 to 25 new subscribers. And that is like, before it was like, I would get maybe three or four, maybe five subscribers per day, but it's really amping up. So we really appreciate all of your um, support, all of everything you guys are doing. We really do appreciate it. A Fuller Life Now says hit the thumb button. Thank you so much, A Fuller Life Now. We do appreciate that. The other content creators there, be sure to check them out as well. Um, so yes, guys, we're going to go ahead and get ready to close. We are 30 minutes past our time, but I just found, you know, I wanted to share these tips. I get asked tips all the time. Here you have it. There's a lot more tips out there. So if we start thinking of some that we didn't share here, we'll jot them down and maybe do it during our next live stream. Our next live stream may not be next Tuesday. We said every first and third Tuesday, but we kind of got off track not realizing that there's four, four Tuesdays or five Tuesdays, four in January. So we weren't actually supposed to be on tonight, but so we'll see. Um, but we have um, more cruise content coming out. Again, like I said, the goal is to cruise once per month. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's in the works. Um, so be you know be sure to have your notification bell on to know when we go um, live. You'll be seeing a lot of shorts from us here. Um, uh, YouTube is now going to be um, showing some favor to those who create shorts. So we're going to be putting some shorts out there. We have our Carnival Elation series still going out. Our Virgin Voyages, uh, Scarlet Lady still going out. And those are released on Fridays um, at 8 p.m. So the next vlog will be out then. And I think that is it for now. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We just hit a thousand subscribers or a thousand followers on Instagram. So thank you for that. Um, so be sure to follow us there because that's where you're going to find out kind of what's going on, where we're, what, where we're going, what we're doing, kind of what's happening now. Um, we don't post as much on YouTube um, on day-to-day -day things, but follow us there for updates. And again, thanks for being here tonight. We really do appreciate you guys. Thanks for those of you who shared out tips. We really do appreciate it. We learned some things tonight. Yeah. Um, so like I said, we cruise all the time, but we learn all the time, like different tricks, different things. So um, again, thank you guys. And we are going to go ahead and close out this thank um, you guys. live stream. So thanks for tuning in and we will see you guys soon. Happy cruising. Bye for now.